stood in line to raise the effigy of San Javier and whisper a prayer for the river's return. We often go to look for the painted buntings, blue grosbeaks and vermilion flycatchers once common where the river was and find their reflections floating like silk handkerchiefs from a conjurer's sleeve. Word has it that a miracle is at hand. But another word says, once a river has vanished, no magic ever brings it back. And I'm going to end with a beginning. And there's a, a piece of chamber music by Olivier Messian, the quartet for the end of time. And at first I thought, oh, I'll write a poem for the end of time. But I thought it was more interesting to go back to the beginning. So this is my version of creation. And what do I need to tell you? I begin and end in the middle of a sentence, so I apologize to any purists out there. And I also change t alternate tense from one section to the next, for which I also apologize in advance. And for any scientific lapses in this. Um, the dacnis is a bird that is mentioned that you may not know. Um, it's a tropical bird, beautiful little blue bird. Poem for the Beginning of Time Had preceded the moment, in the absence of gods it fell to chance and darkness. There was no plan, no where, and the distance came close, and it opened, and water reached for shores to contain it. Against a backdrop of many-colored nebulae, rocks without mercy collide, and from the cacophony through a luminous blue, a darkness flies with its red eye and scarlet thighs glowing, and the song repeating a note determined to last beyond the crash beating itself into silence. Dust had nowhere to settle. The motes floated each with its own little sparkle and hue. They comprised a continent in anticipation of its planet. Caribou, followed by instinct to root across space yet unmarked. Plovers, in all their varieties from golden to snowy, are drawn by a force stronger than light. The trails for migration are already marked, waiting for land to form around them. In the wake of an ice-white flash came stillness. In the wake of the stillness, the grinding began from which mountains emerged. Between snow light and starlight, wolves race to a world where the rain already falls on the snail and the whale in the water calls out to the places language cannot reach. Through the fires erupting and ocean beds buckling, the frost on the backs of massive creatures who wandered until the ground opened beneath them and the coming of the Marge, Ocelot, Osprey and Kite, there were prophets who said that What a wonderfully dramatic ending. Let's give it up one more time for David Charlton. <laughs> I would just like to say that I'm certain I never wrote a poem about a bird until I met him and he became my mentor. So I blame everything to come in my reading on him. Okay. Next, I would like to introduce Michelle Frost. Michelle Frost is a poet, writer, and former bookseller at Changing Hands on Mill Avenue, which I think if you're old enough was your favorite store, as it was mine. She has recently returned home to Arizona after two decades in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Her poems and essays have been published in Yoga Journal, Arizona Woman Today, Portland Parenting, and Southeast Examiner. Michelle Frost.
Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm one of the originals from way back. Raise your hand if you have been to the Mill Avenue Changing Hands bookstore. Okay, there's a few of us. Great. I quit corporate America. I was in healthcare marketing for about three years, and I got a job at Changing Hands Books in the 80s, and that's when my life made the right turn for me. I met Wayne, and we became fast friends. So um, the thing I liked most about Wayne is he kind of uh, said it like it is, and that made me really uncomfortable because I was raised in the Midwest where you had to always be polite at any cost. And so I sort of admired him and he became a hero for me um, because I knew that I could count on him to be completely authentic and sincere. Um, When I moved away in 95, I thought I would just check out Portland, Oregon for a year. And I got on at Powell's Books and one year became 23 years. And I'm very excited to be back home. I went to high school and ASU here, so I feel like I'm home. Uh, During that 23 years away, Wayne and I wrote letters. I found my um, best pen pal ever. And he illustrates his letters. I know you can't see this on the podcast, but he would create these little illustrations on every page. And he um, came up with this little rabbit. So Mr. Rabbit was, I think, his alter ego, um, his funny little sidekick who has a lot of commentary of his own. But I thought I would just uh, read a few excerpts and letters, and then um, I wrote a poem, and there's a poem by Mr. Rabbit, and uh, we'll just take it from there. And then he never put any dates on any of his letters, but this is probably sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s. Can everybody hear me okay? My throat's a little dry tonight. Dear Michelle, greetings from the land of enchantment. Beautiful this time of year as the weather creates all sorts of drama. Skyscapes, rainbows, so many stars on clear, cool nights. Soon the migrations will start. The butterflies have left. Jays have arrived along with sparrows looking to hole up for winter. When the juncos arrive from Oregon and the last of the wildflowers fade, it will be time for hot chocolate. I should mention that all the colors are still vibrant. Yellows, pinks, violets, reds, and the awesome shades of blue that travel above and beyond. Long walks in the morning and evening are a delight, full of surprise and confirmation. I am working on September song and autumn leaves, two of the most beautiful lyrical songs of the season. I believe he was teaching himself piano at that time. It seems that this time of year brings up a lot of memories, just so much water under the bridge, narrow escapes, opportunities lost, the mellow, the bittersweet, resentments, forgiveness, and more time off the clock. I need to remind myself that I am a fortunate, lucky guy. And there's a picture of him looking a little forlorn on a hillside with Mr. Rabbit, And Mr. Rabbit says, I like to think of you as just a little worn around the edges. (laughs) So I wrote this for Wayne uh, after he had moved to New Mexico. Remembering my friend in Silver City today in his garden with birds, the winding path he has fashioned from small, smooth stones set in rows, the gazing ball's curved reflection of trees, small wooden birdhouses hung in branches, He crafts art from old scraps, paints faces of poets and saints. His landscapes fit in the palm of your hand. One brush stroke of gold is a field. He paints magnificence in a size we can carry and reduces beauty to what we can hold. Remembering his wry smile and appreciation, the natural world he recreates for us, He quotes Basho and dabs tiny feet of a bird onto a fence. He paints what happens along in his view. My friend is far away, the keeper of chocolate chip cookies, hot steaming tea, and Etta James. We trade pages in the mail, envelopes like puffs from a train crossing the desert terrain. 
quiet solitary mesas and north past the redwoods <clears throat> and ocean surf, north to mossy rooftops and smoking chimneys. One brush stroke is a rabbit's ear. One brush stroke captures all of our years, a friendship reduced to one lovely haiku. My friend lives a simple life, a poet's silent days and nights, serene in his garden and wise, shimmering in repose like the hummingbird, one brush stroke of scarlet on air. Some more Lister, little uh, Mr. Rabbit and Wayne. Once upon a time, he writes, with only a worn and battered bag of hope, he came upon a scoured land that mirrored his own desolation. But what is life if not the ongoing search for where we sow the seeds of our dreams? Worrying the books and nursery catalogs for just the right tree learning the cost of shoveling a hole in the rock-hard ground, then planting the alpha of expectation and omega of small self as something larger evolves, feeling the resurgent protectiveness for the stewardship of the earth and the warmth of resurrection of a caring heart, experiencing and gaining the wisdom of patience with the unseen hand of impermanence resting on his shoulder. Meditation on nature's irrefutable laws that govern our lives. Finding a delicate balance between heart and mind. I wrote a poem for Mr. Rabbit, which I think is just Wayne. Wayne's other whatever. Mr. Rabbit lives in Silver City. He left the big city behind for the rolling hills and purple sunsets. New Mexico, where he keeps a P.O. box, tending his garden and crafting birdhouses, Mr. Rabbit paints desert landscapes, every kind of bird known to the Southwest. He paints with watercolors. In winter, Mr. Rabbit enjoys new snow, hot cups of tea, and reading long novels. In spring, Mr. Rabbit plants his garden. He reads poetry and listens to a cello. Mr. Rabbit has good taste. You could say he's cultured. When summer arrives, he makes salads. He paints in the open air and muses, what does it all mean, this rabbit's life? He is a satisfied rabbit and blessed. He lives alone among birds and horses. Mr. Rabbit enjoys writing letters to friends. He always has a joke up his sleeve. Mr. Rabbit is a good friend and shares his chocolate. He celebrates his birthday in fall when the trees turn gold and red. And here's a tiny poem. by. It's called Mr. Rabbit's Poem for Poetry Month. There once was a rabbit of merit when finding a carrot would share it. He'd take the small end and give you the stem and when you were finished, he had a new friend. And then in parentheses it says, he refused my help. <laughs> my goodness. It was quite emotional going through these letters and choosing which pages to bring because if you could see um, the stack just from 2000 to now, you know, it was just dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of pages of illustrated letters. Dear Michelle, greetings from the coast. So now he's in Oregon. It is awesomely beautiful over here. I did the three Cape tour the other day and was transported to another world, so beautiful, full of wonderful sights and sounds. I hope you're through the worst of the treatment, and each new day brings a sense of healing and renewal. I saw this book and thought of you and perhaps needing a friendly nudge to continue exploring your artistic side. He sent books quite often. Also wanted to thank you for the watercolors. I've been working on recreating pages from 14th century illuminated manuscripts, and I am pleased with how they have turned out. Lots to do here this time of year, especially the yard work, painting trim on the trailer and this and that. The rolling fields full of daffodils, cows with their Franciscan faces, and sheep grazing. 